So, today we are going to start on the fourth part of multiple integrals, multiple integrals 4. Okay. So, the fourth lecture on multiple integrals, but they, this will actually cover triple integrals. By triple integrals, I mean that I want to attach meaning to this expression. So, if you have a function f of 3 variables x, y, z, then I want to attach meaning to this expression over some domain d. What is the meaning of this? I will not call it domain, I will rather call it, call it kind of volume v, because v here means volume here in 3 dimension. So, dy dx should actually represent a kind of volume. Let us look at a simplistic scenario. Consider this room and you know that at every point there is a different temperature. If you measure it, there will be a different temperature. T, temperature T is a function of x, y, z and assume that they vary continuously. right? So, now I want to know what is the average temperature of the room. So, what I do is, so the room is a kind of box. So, here let me just try to draw the room. The room is a kind of box which has a length say 0 to a and 0 to c and 0 to e. So, it is a length of the length breadth and height of the room and here I construct the picture of the room which is exactly a rectangular room like the room in the studio where I am talking or any classrooms these are rectangular rooms. So, a room is rectangular in the sense solid rectangles means rectangular parallelopiped. So, this is my height E, this is my height E. So, 0 A, this is your A, this is your C, this is your height E, this is my room and at every point there is a different temperature. But I want to know what is the average temperature of the room. So, what do I do? So, construct a very small elemental volume, a very small rectangular parallelopiped whose length, breadth, height are dx, dy and dz. So, this is what we will call elemental volume dv. Elemental volume. So, what is dv? dv is written as dx dy dz length breadth into height that is what dv is. Now, at a given point in that small point in a very in a say in a unit volume at, a, at a one point suppose a point every point is viewed as unit volume right. So, in this in the, if in the unit volume the temperature is T x y z at a point x y z. So, at every point suppose a point is there where the temperature is T x y z which is here a point inside temperature is T x y z. So, what I do the temperature over this whole elemental volume is so T x y z is temp at x y temp at x y z x y z x y z belongs to d v. Now, what happens is that if 
I want to know what, so I will assume that in that very small zone, the temperature does not change much. The change is so less that I can take T x y z as the temperature around. So, what I will do, the temperature in that zone is T x y z d v and over the whole volume v is at a rectangular volume is given by the triple integral because you have to integrate over the whole volume is integral from 0 to a, 0 to c, 0 to e d v which is same as writing 0 to e, 0 to c, 0 to a t x y z into d x d y d z. So, if I know that the total volume of that zone is V naught, then suppose this rectangular area now has A into C into E. So, V naught is the volume of that rectangular area, volume of the room say, volume of the room is actually length, breadth into height is A C E. So, T naught the average temperature T naught is equal to 1 by V naught into integral this integral 0 to A, 0 to C, 0 to E T x y z d x d y and d z. So, there is a meaning in computing, this is a phys in physics, these kind of triple integrals come quite often. Triple integrals, now you, once you know about triple integrals, you can talk about integrals in n variable. So, there are four variables, what I will do? So, you can four variables, you will have four over a some four variable region which I say write w tilde, which I am not telling, it is a part of R 4 say. And you will write f x y z or now you have to give numbers rather f of x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, d x 1, d x 2, d x 3, d x 4. Please understand physicists use this very much, this kind of integration, because this kind of integration comes very much in physics, because physics we talk about space time, where the first variable x 1 corresponds to the time and x 2, x 3, x 3 are the three space variables length, breadth and height. So, uh, physicists if you look at uh, any book on special relativity, you uh, where you use um, kind of um, calculus of variations, principle of least action to um, discuss relativity. For example, this beautiful book by uh, Leonard Susskind called Special Relativity and Classical Field Theory, this kind of integrals had been repeatedly used. Physicist of course, does not write these integrals in such, such a detailed way. This integral they can put it like this, just put one integral which actually combines all these three and will write the zone, the w and then they will write f of t x y z. Sometimes they will just write a symbol called d x 4, which simply means there are 4 differentials that you will use. This is one way of writing. Okay. So, there are several ways of writing the same thing. So, you can now generalize it over to n dimensions. So, we have come to n dimensions, there could be a volume v in, in n dimensions v subset of R n or rectangular volume, right? v is a rectangular n dimensional rectangle. So, w is a four dimensional rectangle here. And you can just write f of, so here you have a n such integrals, f 1 x 2 x n d x 1 d x 2, 
d x n. So, these kind of integrals are actually useful and they are they are actually required and that is that is what we uh, need to understand at the very first attempt that these are uh, very very uh, useful things in physics. So, here again we see the connection between math and the physical sciences. So, very important thing to understand is that if an iterated integral exists for example, you take a rectangle r rectangular parallel period region let it put me r bar and let it be a b cross c d cross e f. So, you can define an first you do it x y and z. So, you can define an integral suppose you want to integrate this suppose you, you are looking at iterated integral when you have rectangles you can talk about in terms of iterated integrals that is a to b first with x then c to d that is with y and then you integrate e to f that is with z and this actually is the triple integral of this rectangular volume f x y z d v that is d x d y d z this is this is how. So, once here there are 6 possibilities there are 3 3 factorial is 6. So, 6 possibilities of iterated integrals if one of them exists then all of them exist and they they, they are all equal to this. So, simple example that I will compute for example, which is given here in the book is for example, you take a box B or B rectangular R bar zone which is 0 1 cross minus half 0 cross 0 1 third and my F in this case. So, I have to evaluate over r bar the integral x plus 2 y plus 3 z whole square d x d y d z. So, let us go by first with x then with y then with z. So, if one does that then let me first compute the integral. So, compute integral 0 to 1. So, you write x plus 2 y this is one of the best ways of writing I learnt it as a in my undergraduate days that this is a very good way of writing. So, you know a way to integrate put the function for the first variable you are integrating put it here. Then the second variable that you are integrating is y in this case. So, it is minus half to 0 the third variable you are integrating is z in this case would d z is 0 to 1 third. So, if you do this integration then of course, if you just keep these uh, things on then this let us see. I get x plus 2 y plus 3 z cube to the power 3 x is varying from 0 to 1 d y d z. Now, if that is the case then this becomes 0 to 1 third minus half to 0. Now, it will be a function of y and z it is 1 plus 2 y so, one third is common here out 2 y plus 3 z by 3 cube minus I do not need ok I am not putting the 3 out. So, let me keep it inside.
that is how you go on. Now, you have to do it with respect to y and when you do it y, so you have y, so you will, you will integrate this part. So, you will actually do a substitution of this whole thing and then you will uh, start working and then you will put back the whole thing. So, if you work it out, you will become So, you know how to integrate, I am not going into this integration business. If you integrate this whole thing out, now you have to do in terms of dz, this is after you put the y thing and the answer is 1 by 12. What I give you as a homework that instead of taking the integral with respect to x first take y first that is you compute the iterated integral. x plus 2 y plus 3 z whole square. Now, I integrate first with y, then with z and then with x. So, it is d y d z and d x. Now, check whether this is also equal to 1 by 12. In fact, once one of them exists, all of them exist and that would be the value of the integral. So, that is what you really have to check. Now, going forward, what would happen? if I am now talking about a region in space. Some region w in space, a closed and bounded region in space. So, for example, w is a w is closed and bounded. bounded in R 3. In our standard three dimensional Euclidean space. How do you define integral? So, what do you mean by suppose you are given if you have a function f from w to r. So, how would you attach meaning to this integral. The idea what we have learned in the case of the double integral, the same idea can be taken up. So, what is the idea? Idea is that you form a new function. So, let, let me just write down. So, what kind of function that I can form? So, I form a new function f tilde x y z and this f tilde x y z agrees with f x y z on w and is equal to 0 otherwise. So, what you do is that when you, when you have this kind of this kind of space this kind of zone a close arbitrary closed and convex zone a close not, not convex closed and bounded uh, region w and then you need to integrate over it and what you do is you put a box around it 
that take a get a box and put that zone in that put that thing in the box basically isko box mein dalo that's the idea because outside that zone on the box the function f tilde is zero So, you put this damn thing in the box. So, you get a rectangle R, R bar and W is now properly contained inside R bar. You know now, we have just defined, you know how to integrate over R bar. We have not spoken, we have just talked spoken in terms of iterated integrals or what do you, how do you integrate over R bar? You know how to do it is through iterated integration. Now what is this R bar? If I really go by my formula for integrals, the one using Riemann sum, then if I have a region R bar, A B cross C D cross E F and I make n partitions, put n minus 1 points and I make n interval partitions on all the of the same um, of on all the 3 axes. And hence, I make a grid of small rectangular parallelopiped. So, I have the rectangular parallelopiped and I make small, small grids full of, rect of rectangular parallelopiped just like we make a grid of small rectangles on, in a given rectangular uh, domain. Then, so call any point in the rectangular pe parallel pipet i j k, i j k th rectangular parallel pipet because here I have length, breadth and height as c i j k. So, what do you do? You construct the Riemann sum, the Riemann sum in this case looks like this. So, here I would have 3 variables, so the Riemann sum must be summed over the 3 variables f c i j k delta x i that is x i to x i plus uh, x i to x i plus 1 that interval the length of that interval which is and all the intervals have the same length delta y j delta z k this is the Riemann sum and you sum i going from 0 to n minus 1 j going from 0 to n minus 1 k going from 0 to n minus 1. Now, my integral as n tends to infinity, the integral over this over any rectangular region R bar of a given function f x y z is limit n tends to infinity of this Riemann sum that we had written. Of course, you are not going to really compute Riemann sums, it will be very complicated. So, that is why iterative integral comes to your help. So, you all we know about real variable calculus that is the major thing and we build on that everything has been built on that. So, maybe I, I this will guard it. So, I will write it here on the top maybe that is better. So, the Riemann integral ultimately is the 
limit of the Riemannian Riemann sum. So, the integral r bar f x y z d x d y d z or d v whatever you want to write is same as lim n tends to infinity summation 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 i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 j is equal to 0 to n minus 1, k is equal to 0 to n minus 1, f of c i c i j k grad x i grad y j grad z k. That is the definition, but that is that looks pretty complicated in uh, it is slightly intimidating and you would not like to get into all this, but what is the idea behind this is that once you take f tilde and you know by iterated integrals you can actually do this job of integrating f tilde over a given region r bar which contains the region w, then the key idea to observe here is that integral, integral, integral over r bar f tilde x y z dv is same as the integral of w of f x y z over d v. Because I can decompose this rectangular region r which contains w bar into two parts, one is w bar, one is the complement of w bar in r and in this rectangular region r bar and then on those two parts I integrate. So, I integrate them separately and on the first part it is 0, that integral goes away and the next part the function f tilde value is f x y z. So, that is what remains. Now, what sort of regions we are interested in? We will just like in the two dimensional case, we will not be interested in every sort of region, but a sort of region which has a kind of well defined boundary and that is what we are going to now talk about, right. The sort of region that we are interested in, for example, I, I construct this region where I first construct a region D in the x y plane and then I have two functions gamma 1 and gamma 2 of x y. So, I consider the region which is bounded by that. So, I have x, suppose I have x here given on a b and I know that y, my y varies from say phi 1 x to phi 2 x, phi 1 x and to phi 2 x. So, this is phi 1 x and phi 2 x. Of course, you know that phi 2 or phi 1 x is phi 1 x of course, is less than equal to phi 2 x for all x that you choose in the interval a b. Then you have two, two you have two well defined on this domain d, you have two well defined functional values and the graphs. Another is like this. Maybe I have to put it, put a bit of bit of things here. do not take my drawing seriously. So, this is gamma 1 x y and this is gamma 2 x y where. So, what we now do is you see that I, we, I have drawn the surface, the graphs of 
two functions phi 1 and phi 2, a gamma 1 and gamma 2 which satisfy this. Do not take my drawing too seriously, it might look very strange that he is just from his mind uh, this guy is doing something, yeah I am just drawing them out of my mind. This is true for all x y now in D and you know the D is this region, only x values are fixed a b and this for a y values are given through this functional values that is y here is lying between So, x, so we are now concerned with those z's which are lying between the, the surface. So, this is the, the this is the zone that I am considered about. I am only considered about this zone, and that is the volume over which I want to now integrate. This is my w. So, basically I am now bother about gamma 1 x y less than z less than gamma 2. So, we are only considering those x y z which is lying between these two. So, we have now defined the region as follows. So, finally, this region w is defined as follows and I can put it in a box. This region w has x a to b has y between phi 1 x and phi 2 x, but that is not the only way we can have regions here. Please understand this is one of the ways you could have had this domain on y z axis y z plane also and looked at the volume in this way this this form that you could define a function of in terms of you could have fixed up your y and define two functions as a function of y and z lying between them and define a function of y z, two functions of y z and those and x would lie between them. You could have done like that also, but this is one way of doing it, one, one type of region basically. And then z is lying between gamma 1 x y and gamma 2 x y. Let us see an example of how this can be done. For example, you look at a unit ball, unit sphere. Center at zero. This x. So, here is the cuts. So, we draw for the unit circle. So, we lying on the x y plane, which means now y is varying given an x, y is varying between these two parts. So, so x now is fixed between minus 1 sorry plus 1 and minus 1. Now, y varies between the two parts of x because given an x, x is plus minus root over y square. So, it is so a y varies between. So, y can take any one given an x, y can take any value between this part and this part if I am considering this whole region as a domain D. So, this is my domain D, this circular zone that you have not just a circle. So, y varies between, so this is my phi 2 x, while z is the hemisphere, the So, on the top there are two parts given any x y you hit two and you take a draw perpendicular through it you hit two parts of the sphere. So, one part the circular the top spherical part is given by root over 1 plus this part is the positive part this part is the negative part. 
So, the upper part is given by root over minus z equal to root over 1 minus x square minus y square, the lower part is given by minus z is minus root over 1 minus x square minus y square. So, z in this case is lying between Okay, now, let us use this idea. So, once we have this idea then, so what we what we can do? Suppose, we have a scenario like this. So, how do I write the integral? So, integral of w f x y z d v. Now, so what we have done? We have we know how we know how we have put z, how we have put y then we have put x. In this case the way we have just done it, so in this case we will first put the z case that is we will first integrate out with respect to z and have a function of x y then we integrate out with respect to y have a function of x and then we integrate out x. So, gamma 1 x y to gamma 2 x y. So, I am writing down the iterated forms d z phi 1 x phi 2 x d y and then a to b d x. So, that is that is the way to compute it. For example, now I take the unit sphere right and I compute the volume, volume of the unit sphere. What is my functional value here? Here is 1 because volume the total volume is computed through this. So, sphere d v. So, here I know how I have written it down. So, I will use this iterated integral scheme. So, integral minus root over 1 minus x square minus y square to plus root over 1 minus x square minus y square d x again minus 1 minus root over 1 minus x square plus root over 1 minus x square and minus 1 to plus 1. So, I will write here d z. So, first I do with z just the way here d z d y d x. And if I integrate it out, if I do the first integration, I get minus 1 to plus 1 minus root 1 minus x square to plus root 1 minus x square. And then if I integrate this out, what will I get? Z. So, I will get, I will, what I will get? I will just get a z with these limits. So, that will turn out to be 2, 2 will come out 2 into root over. 1 minus x square minus y square. So, it now becomes a function of x y z goes away d y and this has to be integrated out and then d x. So, again it will have d y and this will come in. So, how, what, how do I integrate this part? So, this is nothing but a circular zone. If I fix x And then I put say a equal to 1 minus x square to the power half root over. So, this, this whole thing can be written as a square minus y square. And you know this is nothing but a circle lying between this and this, between minus a and plus a. I am putting a equal to this. So, between so integral between minus a and plus a. So, if you integrate it, it will be nothing but half of the circle between minus a and plus a just the positive part it will be pi a square by 2. So, this integral would be 2 will go cancel out and finally, this part will become minus 1 to plus 1 pi a square. So, pi into 1 minus x square. So, that is what I have to integrate out 
pi a square by 2 d x. So, this is evaluated very care very care you know, with a very 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 cleverly that is taking root over 1 minus x square as a then this is a square. So, a square minus y square minus a 2 plus a this is nothing but integrating on the upper part of the circle between minus a and plus a. So, it is half the area it is a semi area of the semi circular zone which gives you pi a square by 2. So, a square is 1 minus x square. So, pi a square by 2 into d x. Of course, uh, you can actually put in all these things and get the same answer in the normal way, but only anyway 2 into uh, because here you have to observe that this, there is a y here. So, you have to really integrate here we carefully very cleverly take away the, re, the, the tough part of the integration you do not need to put the formula of a square minus x square and all those things. So, minus a to plus a you do it and that is what you get pi a square by 2 now 2 to cancel and you have integral minus 1 2 plus 1 pi 1 minus x square d x and the answer here comes out to be pi goes out 4 by third pi. Low the radius was 1. So, 4 by third pi r cube that is the volume of the 4 by third pi is the volume of the unit uh, sphere and that you could find so nicely by integration, but using this kind of ideas. Please understand that this is not the only way to break up a zone right. There could be any other ways to break up a zone and you can try out your own problems. For example, you can break the zone as follows you can have you can have fix y between c and d that is what I told you. Now, you can vary z between two functions of y. So, z will be between psi 2 y and psi 1 y. So, basically here you are considering y between c and d and then you are considering the domain d to be consisting of two functions. So, this is z. So, it is a function of so z is lying between two functions this is your psi 1 y and this is your psi 2 y. And now here just which uh, where everything comes out of the plane of the this board this electronic board I can have two surfaces one which is always lying above the other or is to a more towards the positive side of x axis than the other is I can now talk about a function say rho. So, now this domain is on the y z plane. So, you have a function on y z and x can lie between them. So, in this case when you integrate in this case when you integrate, so what is your integration policy? So, if you want to integrate out in this and everything is in this particular format, you want to integrate out w is the thing lying between these two zones, the, the x y z between these two zones. And uh, I uh, want to integrate out this. Now, if you run an iterative integral, first you have to take off the x. then you take off the z, z goes from phi 1 y to phi 2 y. And then you have to integrate out the c 2 d that is the way. So, you have a problem you depends on what way you are looking at the region, which way you are looking at the region where whatever be the way you look at the region there is another way also you can take the x z plane and do the other things. So, you can try out your own problems the many many ways to do things. So, the several problems you can try it from the net etcetera, but this is the way to go about it. So, we have made quite a discussion of dub triple integrals and the next class we are going to see the how 
change of variable or substitution technique can work in this multiple integral setting. Thank you.